video, I'm going to take you through the entire process of creating a larger painting. That's a special one. It took me one and a half month to finish. The process is going to be longer than usual. But other than the process itself and some special processes and art supplies that I was using for this one, I also wanted to share with you how my art journey currently is sort of weighing down on me and how difficult it is to manage not only time but mostly energy. I just feel that all these things, successes but also the hardships, they belong to a person's art journey and I want to talk about all that on this channel because if you're an artist or hoping to become one in time, there will be bumps on that road and art career is especially a very unpredictable one. Maybe my little video will help you set your expectations realistically and avoid burnout. This painting was supposed to go to a group exhibition that I attend every year with a bunch of really amazing local artists in a gallery nearby. I wanted to do something special, not just a quick study and my new year's resolution was to stop avoiding larger surfaces. It's a challenge for me. So in May I ordered arcs of watercolor paper from Jackson's Art Supplies. They are the only store where currently I can get arcs of Canson Moulin du Roi paper in a bulk and the shipping wasn't cheap but this time I want the best and this is my favorite paper. So I had that old round canvas in my studio and I ripped the canvas off of it and then stretched soaked watercolor paper on it. You have to leave the paper completely dry on a frame and when you're ready to work the paper will handle any amount of water without buckling. I don't do this process when I paint small but will do more larger works like this soon because I feel that's the kind of workout that finally makes me level up a bit. The sketch was a freehand one obviously but on an extra sheet of paper I had to design the face for this portrait and even though I had references I only used them vaguely to see light and shadow. It is difficult to make up all the details which is where the reference comes in handy but I make sure that I'm not creating a copy of anything. The face looked better on a spare paper though. I didn't quite get the expression when I transferred the sketch over to the stretched paper. You would think that it's a copy of what you originally drew but it is not a hundred percent the lines could be like more shaky and that could cause smaller details like the overall expression to be slightly different when you transfer your sketches. Sorry I didn't have the courage to draw directly to the stretched paper because I was so worried that I'm gonna mess it up and it was two days work to stretch it the way it is. Okay so this is where the painting process starts and the hardest labor of preparation is now complete. Painting this face took a couple of painting sessions. I had to step away from it for a few days to see if I got it right, but it's crazy difficult to judge the values when you don't have the rest of the colors on the paper. I needed to paint the hair and at least part of the background and the dress to be able to tell if the shadows of the face are fine. So that's my strategy nowadays, placing all the colors to the canvas as soon as possible and then tuning different areas of the painting more or less together. Does that make sense? It never works for me to paint in sections and bring details to a high level of finish while other areas are untouched. But I still attempt to give the face as much definition as I could before I placed all the colors in there. But it still wasn't really finished. I'm gonna finish it after the background is in place. And I still didn't tell you what this painting actually is, right? It was inspired by the Ukrainian folklore and their traditional wear, which is kind of similar to the traditional Slovakian clothes that are full of color, floral elements and handmade colorful embroidery. I'm not an expert on what it's supposed to look like 100%, so I took a leap of faith and some online research, but I understand that since this is folk, there is a wider range of what elements have been used in those traditional clothings and I could tell them apart like the Ukra Ukrainians from Slovak traditional clothes by those metallic elements and jewels and they're not typical for the Slovakian clothings. So you will see it later in the video that I'm gonna be adding some metallic elements to paint the necklaces and the earrings. <music> Thank you. 
backgrounds are so much fun and the larger the artwork the more fun it gets i use my favorite kinds of green and and also i mask some areas beforehand with the sandalier masking fluid to protect them i wanted to have like these white flowers i also masked a few patterns on her clothes and then covered them up with another watercolor layer the background i've built gradually uh, i used several layers and I was never sure how it's gonna look. It was improvised for the most part. I used the regular table salt for the first layer and then later in the video you're gonna see me using larger grains of salt. Whenever I stretch the paper to the point where it looks like a canvas then this is the best type of salt that I have really great results with. Stories of joy and of Dying to know it all To know it all But with all my work, I still missed the deadline for the exhibition. My painting was only at the first stages and I was mentally torn between rushing the process to meet the deadline or to take my time with the painting until the point where I myself am prepared to let the painting go and consider it finished. The downside of missing the deadline is that it's not going to be seen by people, at least not this year. I would probably be able to sell it during that exhibition, which is the least of my concerns right now. I'm still not prepared to let this painting go for the kind of price that people have been offering me lately for my works. I mean, it's okay to sell a smaller watercolor artwork for 150 euros, but this one will rather stay in my studio until the end of time than if I was to undervalue it again. Let's discuss the challenging task of pricing your artwork in a different video. The problem here was to decide if the pieces needed to be rushed for practical reasons or rather avoid exhibitions and events and let the work mature a little. So you guessed it. I avoided the exhibition this year and made me a little sad. The exhibition started a few days ago and I was not there. I didn't even go to the opening. I was busy anyway, but no exhibitions for me this year. I seriously need to focus on my progress right now. The exhibition is not the goal. It is just what you do when you have the artwork that you're proud of. I just uh, will not put such a pressure on me and my artworks ever again. And if the piece that is larger currently because of my situation with family and my very very limited working time allows me to create one large piece every two months then so be it I wanted to tell you how I'm feeling and it's not a great update. I have not only reached my limits this month, but far exceeded what I can handle and it took a toll on my mental and physical health. It's been a year since my youngest daughter was born. She was one years old yesterday and I can't believe how time flies, how beautiful she is and how happy we are to have her in our life. My older daughter helps me a lot and my husband does too. He lets me work as much as he can since he works full time. I can be really relieved of the motherhood duties at 5 p.m. every afternoon on a workday and I can be painting and filming in the studio until about 8 p.m. Sometimes I stay until 9. On a weekend when he doesn't work, I leave for the studio at 7 a.m. and come home at 9 p.m. which gives me 28 hours during entire weekend for work. But if my work was the YouTube channel and my Patreon, for example, that would be manageable. However, my studio is a small local business and I run live workshops that need to not only be taught but prepared for. There is a lot of communication and paperwork included. This has been my main job for over four years. We knew that once the new baby is here I won't be able to stay home for more than two months but sadly she is a very bad sleeper and the combination of sleep, deprivation and difficult long work days has been killing me lately. I can handle to work a lot because I have that inner stamina from loving what I do so much that lets me to put a 
side meetings with friends and watching Netflix or other time wasters and do what needs to be done. The way I see it, this is what I choose to do with my life. So I really need to put my neck out there and I don't think that I'm impatient to progress. I know that these things take time. And what is a decade in the life of an artist? It's a lifelong journey that cannot be manufactured overnight, no matter what you heard about a quick success. I think mentally it would be easier to handle if there was at least one person to completely understand why I do so much to the point of breaking and everyone seems to just throw a well-meant advice on me in terms of you need to do less things because that's simply not possible for me. I love being a mom and I love my kids, but not everyone is cut out to be a stay-at-home person. I know that this is a very difficult topic and there are controversial opinions regarding this, but I'm certain that if I was a man, I wouldn't have to make these hard choices every day and my progress wouldn't take 10 years. Again, this is my choice and I'm perfectly happy lying in my own bed, but I just want to say it is perfectly okay to acknowledge that this is damn hard and even cry if you need to. This doesn't mean that you give up or that I give up or that I let my studio go or let my YouTube channel go or stop painting personal pieces. I need to talk about how hard this is because I've had people ask me how I handle all the work with the baby and I'm far away from being a perfect mom of my family. Quite the opposite actually. Being able to work as an artist takes a toll but makes me more appreciate every single hour that I get to focus on painting. And then when I'm at home not working Working, just staying with my kids makes me appreciate those moments even more. So this painting took me six weeks to finally finish, but it contains every single detail that I thought was necessary to add and I had enough time to think about it. And now all that's left is to take it to framers to see if they can handle framing a round canvas like this one. And even though things are tough right now and I'm not able to take on any new projects, I'll be here twice a week because I want to and I just want you to know that this channel became an important part of my journey and the community that met here is a strong one. You guys have a lot to say every time that I'm reading and replying to your comments. It makes me feel a little more heard and seen. With that said, thanks for watching. I will see you again in just a few days. Cause it hurts when I'm